Right, the news. And, of course, we have been off the air for a while. God, and... he is such a child. Yeah, where is he, anyway? I don't know, in the audience somewhere, flicking me, people's ears and blaming people next. Oh, here Excuse me. Hi. Oh, some of the charm. <laughs> You wearing that for a bit? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. He's done it. <laughs> World champion. <laughs> what a man. What a man. <laughs> or. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Twice on the trot. Yeah. Still, never mind, Lewis. Next year, third time lucky. Why do we record this on a Wednesday? I've no idea. Because if we did it on a Sunday, we'd know that by now. Oh, no, it is just the end of the world. I tell you what, if we recorded on a Sunday, we'd know who'd won Strictly Come Dancing, and then we could tell everybody. <laughs> yeah, I just want one as it bounces around the track, it's great. But if, for some reason, maybe you're like Eeyore, you don't want one of those... Are you wearing that for a bet? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is, oh, OK. Jeremy? Yeah. The slippers? Yeah. Are they bet? Of course they're a bet. God for that. Are you wearing that for a bet? No. No? No. Oh. <laughs> right. Now, in a tradition stretching back two years, it's time for the annual <laughs> Top Gear look at Christmas presents with the motoring theme. Pro yes. Oh, I've got a bag here full of <laughs> gift ideas. Literally. More gift ideas in here than you can shake a stick at. Go on, then. What have you got? Starting with this, OK? It's an eco-calculator. Uh, from Renault. Now, you charge it up by doing this. <laughs> now, I don't know what was wrong with solar power, personally, but... Oh, I don't know. I think some people just find this sort of thing comes more naturally to them. <laughs> Renault think it comes naturally to their customers, as it is. <laughs> now, Jeff Hoon, OK, is the Transport Minister, yes? And uh, he announced this week that he wants to have more average speed cameras on the roads, OK? Because he says they're good for safety and they reduce fuel consumption. Now, this is the same Jeff Hoon who, when he was Defence Secretary, said, and I'm quoting, uh, We know that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> so he must be right about the speed cameras as well, then. Yes, absolutely. He's pr I'll tell you what he's done, OK? Because he claims he goes on the M1 a lot in those roadworks. You know, around Junction 6, 8, they're up there. They've been doing them for, well, since 1850. Forever. Yeah, just been doing it for... Average speed cameras on that, and he says, well, there you are, you see, there's hardly been any accidents. That's because the roads are jammed up. Not moving. Then no, you can't crash when you're stationary. So we've had to come up with some of our own. <laughs> A better a... system than the average speed camera, OK? Have a look at this. So this is real, this is in Denmark. Look what they're doing there. <laughs> It's brilliant. Mm. <laughs> Give me one good reason why that won't work. You'd slow down. Oh, I'd slow right down. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Top Gear rides to the rescue of the nation. And now, the news. And it's great news, ladies and gentlemen. It's news to warm the hearts of nations. Jeremy Clarkson has lost his voice. <laughs> Imagine how we feel. <laughs> They're gutted, mate. They're gutted. But the good news is that means we can talk about whatever we like and say whatever what? we like. <laughs> so, no, let's... let's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. So, let's get on with the news. And I thought we'd start this week with talking about um, this magazine called Heat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every year they do a survey in which they ask the whole world to tell them their sort of weirdest crush, their strangest, freakiest, oddest, most embarrassing, ridiculous person to fancy. <laughs> and, uh, well, do you want to guess you, who's, who's... He's won it, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Here he is! Look at that! Yeah! Number one weird, weird crush. And the other thing, ladies and gentlemen, in the same magazine, this is... This is actually quite poetic in the romance, because he's in the same magazine as his boyfriend, look! Oh, <laughs> no, well, young. And he loves him so much, Sir so, Jeremy, you must be... I'm really pleased that you should share 
magazine space with Will Young, your, your boyfriend. James, bad news. The Dacia Sandero. The what? The Dacia Sandero is not coming to the UK. Oh. oh. Now, uh, British car... <laughs> British sports car makers, uh, heroic chaps in sheds, they've always been able to pretty much melt your heart with their, with their creativity, with the fantastic swooping curves of an E-Type Jaguar or an Aston Martin DB7. And now there's a new British sports car, and here it is. Good grief. <laughs> is that um, the car on a shed he built it in with some wheels? <laughs> It's the Jetstream SC250. It cost you £30,000 and is made in Cornwall. Is it made out of tin? No. <laughs> is it made out of cloth of cream? No. Strawberry wheels. Does it spend every night on Harlem Bay trying to snog public schoolgirls <laughs> while smoking marijuana? Hey. None of these jokes are working with this audience, no. but they are. <laughs> but they are. I in my know house. what you mean. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I have to say, I do feel for the poor bloke who, who's launched this, because with the best will in the world, and I do wish you all the best, but I think, frankly... You're... Are you saying that all British sports car manufacturers who optimistically set up in a shed and think they can do better than Porsche go bust? What, like TVR? Yes. Marcos. Yes. <laughs> Strathcarran. Yes. 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 E yes. <laughs> yes. Ginetta. It, no. Are Ginetta still going? They are. Well, 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 well there's hope for him yet. <laughs> Hey, hey, now, you know Porsche is always saying that they don't ever really restyle the uh, 911 because they want to maintain that sense of purity and tradition. Yes. I don't think that's true. I think they don't restyle it properly because they can't. They have no idea at Porsche how to restyle cars. Because if you think about it, the four-wheel drive, it's the KN, isn't it? Yes. The KN looks like a 911 that's been reversed into a shed, yes? <laughs> and now... They're doing a four-door car, OK, which is called the Panamera, which sounds like a hat, OK? Look at this. God, it's just <coughs> woeful. It is. <coughs> Are you all right? Excuse me. No, I'm going to die now. Is it this? Has this made you feel sick? I was going to say, that's exactly what it is. I looked at that and it nearly killed me. It is so <laughs> awful. Can I make an observation about this car? What? That is an Austin Maxi. Do you remember the Maxi? Yes. Have we got a picture? Can we, have we got a picture of the Austin Maxi? Just... Look, there you go. He is. He is right. He is. That is an Austin Maxi. <laughs> Porsche Maxi. The only difference is, of course, that the Porsche Austin Maxi is going to be, well, nearly £90,000. What gets me is, who's going to say of this, no, no, I don't want the Maserati Quattro Porta. Or what, you know that four-door Lamborghini we had in the studio last week? Yeah. Who's going to say, yeah, no, I want this instead? That's like being offered the choice of marrying two women, one of them unkind and ugly, and the other, beautiful with a heart of gold, and say, no, I want the brutal nigger. <laughs> that is the brutal nigger. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a nurse. Could you come and kill him? <laughs> have, you got a, have you got anything in your bag which is, like, lethal? Seriously. <laughs> what can we... A syringe and water? <laughs> Come on, all I've she, got worse. All she needs is a syringe and some water to kill someone. Is she a nurse or a ninja? <laughs> <laughs> right, no, anyway, so I want that to be, go away. I don't want to see that car ever again as long as I live. Well, you know, and I never will, actually, because nobody's going to buy one. Smokers, are you worried about the excess space around your existing pink metallic ashtray? <laughs> yes, and I are you a motoring enthusiast? If so, worry no more, because you can now fill that excess space with this plastic, disc brake and caliper themed <laughs> ashtray surround novelty. What is that? Look at that. <laughs> Who thought pink and red would be a good idea going to get... Do you think that's his biggest problem? You were thinking, you're worried about the colour scheme. And there's more fast, small car news from Renault with this, which is the Megane R26R. And I think that looks really great as well. Yeah, yeah, I saw that and thought of you straight away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 
thought, what, what that James May is going to want is a hatchback with red wheels, six-point harnesses, a carbon fibre bonnet, plastic windows. That's him. It is. And James, it's French, who yeah. you like to think of as lamb-burning communists. Well, it's absolutely. perfect for you in every way. How did you it's... arrive at wanting that? Because I like it. Uh, look, James, let me put it to you this way. You would have to have literally no penis at all <laughs> to buy a car. How do you work that out? Well, because we're always being told that the flashness of your car is inversely proportionate to the size... Is this right? Am I talking I sense here, girls? <laughs> so the larger the man's car, the flasher it is, the vegetable thing goes on. Is that right? Yeah. And you're saying that to a man with a 1.2-litre Fiat Panda? <laughs> Mr. Swollen Wheel Archer's Mercedes CLK Black. He has a point there. He does You've got a Ford Mustang. Let's move on. Let on. You know what he did the other day when he still had his voice? He came into the office and he went, Oh, have you heard Will's new single? It's fantastic. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Will. He went Will. on about it all the time. I love Bill's new song. He does. I just say. Oh, it speaks. <laughs> or, or, or sort of squeaks. Is that. <laughs> yeah, no. I'll... Oh, that's just a noise. Are you deflating? What's that? Synthetic saliva. <laughs> Do you need? It you... means that yeah. I have just a few minutes of speaking. Oh, <laughs> so you like you need more saliva? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've no doubt we can apply it with that. <laughs> How do you know it's <coughs> synthetic and it isn't just some blood? <laughs> 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 You can shut up for a kickoff as well. What? What is that noise you're making? Have you seen his eye? He's got the biggest eye infection I've ever seen. <laughs> At least I don't look like a mutant. Has it come to this? I'm working <coughs> with these two. This isn't a television programme anymore, it's a colony. <laughs> What's next, guys? As I want to talk about Aston Martin brought out a new car. It's uh, the 177. Here it is. It's a striking-looking thing, I know. Mm. And I think it goes to show just how in tune with the times Aston Martin are. Mm. It really is a car for the moment. 7.3-litre mm -hmm. V12. Oh, I'm glad about that. I get, must get 100 calls a day from people saying, I've, I'm, I've got to have at least 7.3 yeah. litres in 12 cylinders. <laughs> That's, That's what I want right now. Very know. much of the moment, yeah. absolutely. Price, £1.2 million. Pounds. Oh, and that's good thing. Just yeah. now. Literally this morning, 30 yeah. people called up. I'm not spending a penny more than 1.2 mil on my next car. Uh, uh, Aston have got it bang on right, because as we know, the world right now is full of stockbrokers desperate for something to blow their enormous bonus on. <laughs> and there, there it is. Pretty soon, Aston Martin are going to be selling more more key rings than they are cars, <laughs> or making more money from them at Actually, least. Actually, they say that they've uh, that a hundred potential customers have written to them to express their interest. A hundred? Yeah, written in crayon, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, a nice one, eighty-eight thousand pounds list price. We know somebody who's got one of these, actually. Yeah, we do. It? It's, um, hang on, it's, it's, it's not, uh, uh, it? it's not Oh, you. no, it's the Clarkson. That's it. I knew, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew somebody. <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy this, am no, I? No, do carry no. on, please. No, a car just like yours. The one you've got. It was £88,000 new with a few extras on it. Guess how much that was worth a year later. <laughs> Go on, what? James. £44,000. Half its value gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Halved its And the only one here got a V8 Vantage? Oh, wonderful. Well, you're all better off as a result. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody here got a Vanquish? Here? Yeah. No, because they're here, James. That's very true. <laughs> um, that's even worse. That's uh, £175,000. Mm -hmm. Guess how much that car was worth after 10,000 miles? Guess how much you got for it? No idea. £50,000. That's £125,000 in, in... 10,000? Yep. So that means if his nearest shop is two miles away and he pops out for a pint of milk, that's... 50 quid? Yep. Just because of the... 50 <laughs> pounds no, for a pint? That's 50 pounds in depreciation. That doesn't include, you know, tyre wear, petrol, insurance, milk. <laughs> that's a lot of... You see, I get my milk from the back of a cow. It's much cheaper. The back of a... That's not milk. I'm not going to let my wife... <laughs> ..under a cow. <laughs> yeah. Right, now, we've always thought there's absolutely no reason for anyone to own a Persia. Uh, hang on. <laughs> See? Mm, no, I can't. Anyone here got a Peugeot? Yeah. Why? <laughs> who said? Who said yes? There. Why have you got a Peugeot? 
It was given to you. <laughs> Damn, that's the reason. What sort of Peugeot is it? 306. 306. <laughs> They're lovely. <laughs> No, really, apart from being given one, I can't think of a single reason. Well, the thing is, Peugeot have decided to address this, and they think they have with this. It's the partner teepee. <laughs> no, ah, no, bear with me. You see, here's the reason. Because they fitted it with a roof box, which kind of goes inside over the seats like that, and they say it's ideal for storing long, thin things in, mm -hmm. like a surfboard. So, what they're saying is, if you are a surfer who wants a car with a loft, you can keep your surfboard in. Yeah, are is there it... any surfers here? <laughs> yes, there are. Who's a surfer? Do you like, not, do you like to keep it dry? Because that's what I... Just, it's how many surfers are there? <laughs> I don't want to get my surfboard wet. It's just... It's not going well, is it? It isn't I going accept. well. Look at these! These are little remote control cars that have been sent. Now, you turn them on, they make a bit of a din because... For reasons we can't work out, they stick to vertical surfaces and then you can drive them about. Now, this is great, OK? This is fantastic. Except, of course, us three decided to see how big the range was. <laughs> Earlier in the week, we decided to try them out by seeing how high up the side of the BBC we could get them to go. <laughs> so, if you were watching The One Show last night, you probably saw this, OK? Because they're in the, the office above us. with every other kind of store. Uh, uh, try really look. hard at this time of year to stop us counting the pennies in favour of throwing financial... <laughs> 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 We'd like to say uh, sorry to the, uh, the one show for ruining your, uh, ruining your show like that. <laughs> now, you know the Duchess of York, OK, Sarah Ferguson? She recently sold her Jaguar, which has ended up in the hands of... Um, well, it was in the papers this week. Uh, the hands of a cabbie, uh, Steve Coulson, 31, of the north somewhere. <laughs> now, he's gone to the papers because he found that she's left all the addresses she's been to in the sat-nav still programmed into the system. He's saying, OK, what if I'd been a terrorist? This car is a suicide bomber's dream. Now, one of the addresses in there is Windsor Castle. Well... Another, <laughs> Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I think some people know where those things are already. No, don't laugh. This is a national security nightmare. It oh, is. yeah. And also, he has inadvertently made himself the world's most hunted man, because I'm presuming he's looked at this sad man. Yeah. He's seen the address of He's, where... He, he knows like, where Windsor Castle Well, every terrorist, <laughs> every terrorist organisation in the world is going to be after him for his lethal secret knowledge. <laughs> I think there's only one decent course of action here. What? Behave with honour. Well, assuming he has destroyed it now, that's fine. He has read it. Therefore, he must kill himself and take his knowledge to the grave. <laughs>
Oh dear, I've arrived at a point where I can't say the word. <laughs> you really have talked to yourself. Yes. Um, OK, now they've resorted. They've resorted to offering incredibly long test drives to people just to get them into the showroom, OK? Lexus will lend you a car for 48 hours, two days. BMW say you can go in one of their cars for 100 miles. Peugeot, 24 hours. Peugeot? Peugeot. Are they surprised when people bring it back after 24 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough of that. <coughs> now, the reporter who uh, <laughs> uncovered this story, he says he went to a Peugeot dealership to try a 207, and the, uh, the salesman said, well, I can go one better than that, sir. I can lend you a 4007. That's not one better, is it? That's 3,800 better, he went, <laughs> just to try and get a sale. One better than a 207 is, work it out, it's, um, it's herpes. Yeah. <laughs> Think about this logically. How many people here drove down to the studio today? Everybody? Peugeot is a brilliant car, best in the world. What's a brilliant car? <laughs> Peugeot 406 with a six-player CD. <laughs> That's you, Tom. <laughs> making a fine case for it. Which is not I think he thinks that the Peugeot 406 with a six-player CD is, <laughs> is the best car in the world. Not an Enzo, as it turns out. We've been wasting our time. And I'm glad you brought that up, because I'm going to skip on down, if I may. Please. The number of lunatics in Britain has been half. <laughs> I know there's some evidence to suggest that they're out and in the countryside <laughs> and among us, but I have arrived at this conclusion with a simple and alarming fact that came across my desk only this morning. Electric car sales are down by half, which must mean that loonies are fewer and fewer between. <laughs> really, I genuinely congratulate you for your bravery. Um, it's a really good report in the papers this week, OK? And in um, Shropshire, uh, somebody went to one of those speed cameras, put a tyre over it, a blanket over the top of the whole ensemble, and then poured petrol on it and set it alight, OK? Fire Brigade spokesman said it was, and I'm quoting, a deliberate attack. <laughs> now, listen, a lot of... Uh, in the current financial crisis, OK, a lot of people won't be going on holiday next year to the Caribbean or, indeed, anywhere even remotely exotic. <laughs> But don't worry, because I think I've come up with a solution for you. Good grief. Check it out. <laughs> it's a company in the Isle of Wight that's modified a Citroen by fitting it with a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know it costs £19,000? What's that? Is that a window? Or do you sort of unzip it, climb in, and then put your head through it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've come as a Citroen! It is, it's like one of those things that Pont is gone, kid. Stick your face through the Citroen. But £19,000. For, ci for a Citroen cost. <laughs> <laughs> and it only has one bed. Well, he's not going to have a friend, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> uh, you won't need to. I want to congratulate Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. I think we all should. Yeah. A couple of tips, though, if you're watching, Lewis, OK? We, were, we saw in the paper, OK, here, that uh, his girlfriend said, and she's the one from the Pussycat Dolls, you're going to get it tonight. Hey. OK? That's what she said after the race. Uh, we then saw in another paper uh, that he'd actually done this. Stayed up till 9am. What? If you've got a Pussycat Doll, Lewis, saying you're going to get it tonight, here's an idea, go to bed and have it. <laughs> Maybe he didn't realise what she meant. I've already won it. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> How could he get it he so says it's wrong? A, we're, we're a bit baffled by that. It's just... uh, you know Boris Johnson, OK, Mayor of London? I was driving around behind a bus this week and I took a photograph of the message he's put on it. OK, uh, this is from the Mayor of London and it says, Amazing! Changing gears at lower roads reduces your CO2 emissions and saves you money. I was then reading GQ magazine, OK? A road test here of a Ferrari... Uh, 4.30, and it says, the essence of it, in my view, is not to change up until you hit about 6,000 revs. <laughs> this was written by somebody called Boris Johnson. <laughs> uh, now, OK, there's been a financial crisis. Is it the first time you've heard of it? <laughs> What happened, in essence, as far as I can work out, is that I think because we were off the air, everyone got bored, so banks started lending money they hadn't got to other banks that gave the non-existent money to Mexicans in Southern California who couldn't pay it back. And now, as a result of that, your cars are all worthless. Yeah. I think what I've done there is summarise the financial crisis you quite well. You covered it off nicely. 
Well, I was having dinner the other night with a man, and we were talking about the financial problems, and he said he bought a Volkswagen Phaeton, OK, the five-litre V10, OK? Mm -hmm. Paid £60,000 for it 18 months ago, just been offered 17. How? That's £85 a day depreciation on a Volkswagen. You're going to feel that. You wake up in the morning, I'm £85 worse off than I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Next year, this is the good thing about Formula One, it's coming home, as we like to think, to the BBC. Yeah. 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 No adverts. Yes. The only problem we've got is that there are some people speculating that the, the person who's going to get the commentary job, who's going to be the modern-day Murray Walker, is Richard Hammond. I've seen that in the papers. A man who has, a he has <laughs> never watched a Formula One race in his life. Uh, no. You weren't true. even watching last weekend. No, I was driving home. Did you look around and think, God, the traffic's quiet tonight? <laughs> I did get a clear run, I must say. It is. <laughs> if he got the job, it really would be. And they're off, and look at that idiot in the Mercedes SL, he's holding them up. No, Richard, that's the parade lap. <laughs> There's a red one in the lead. He's pulled in. What? For petrol? Well, why didn't he just fill up before he left? It would, it would. <laughs> I freely admit I wouldn't be very good at that. He plan. would be the worst person in the world for that job. Well, not absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he would be good. Anyone got any thoughts? <laughs> Dale Winston. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Russell Brand. Yes. <laughs> No, I rang Rolf Schumacher, and we're off the air. <laughs> yeah. I can't give anybody. It's going to have to be me. Um, I tell you what, instead of hurling abuse at each other, why? <coughs> excuse me. Why don't we do the news? Yes, let's do the news. <laughs> Good news, OK? We haven't been asked to do the commentary on the Formula One coverage on the BBC next year. Yeah, it's a relief. Good. No, it's good news. Especially what they've got, they've brought Martin Brundle over from ITV. That's fantastic. We'll be able to watch the slow march of his trousers up his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> they've got um, Eddie Jordan. He's going to be a pundit. That's fantastic. Eddie's a great guy. Uh, David Coulthard, though, is the other pundit, and that worries me because I think that means that on lap two of every race, your telly will suddenly go off. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll just fall off the stand for no reason. Why has he done that? Apparently, they've got, they've got Murray Walker involved. They have it? Murray Walker's coming back to the BBC. He is. Yeah. No, bless him. It's his did, good news. Did you know, though, he's 84? I know he'll be going to Silverstone going, we're all trees here when I were a lad. <laughs> Ferrari's pulled in for their first pit stop. Let's go over to Murray Walker. <laughs> Murray, can someone change me bag? It's full again. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive, but at 84, to be commentating on F1, that's pretty cool. You won't be commentating on anything. Look. the show last week Will Young was the guest and I don't know if anybody else noticed but when he first sat down mm. it was sort of Jeremy was not really bothered he didn't even know his name didn't know what to talk about. next minute he's going all doe-eyed looking at him talking, <laughs> talking about interior design oh well I love cushions as well I'm having my house done up <laughs> really and you had a mini they're lovely Will <laughs> Jeremy's in love. Are you suggesting Will Young is gay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Are you kidding? Yes. Is he? To be honest, it was beautiful to watch. It's just my gaydar doesn't work as well as yours, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that jacket. 
How big was the bet? Pretty big. OK, now... <laughs> right, uh, should we do the news? Yes, we'll yes. ignore that. And let's kick off with this Infinity, new brand to the UK, and it is to Nissan what Lexus is to Toyota, a kind of posh version of it. They're coming over with some cars, some 4 before 4s and this. Now, this is a V6 engine, 3.7-litre convertible. All I want to know about this car is why have they styled it to look like the Lexus SC430? You know the one? Look! I mean, that is undoubtedly the most vile and hideous car ever made. Why make it look like that? <laughs> it is vile, but it's completely academic because you never see one of those in the real world. Oh, you, oh, do. you do, you do. Go to Cheshire, they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, and they're always being driven by those women that have got faces actually made from leather. <laughs> but whenever I see them, those women driving those cars, I really do want to stop them and just ask. I want to beg. Why? Tell me, why did you buy that? Because it's an expensive car. It's like getting every travel brochure, choosing your summer holidays next year, 180 countries you could go to, and saying, yes, Germany. Yes. <laughs> not, not Mauritius, not, not Mauritius, Dortmund is no, where no, I want to go. It is that bonkers a choice, it's that yeah. terrible a car. Is it, the thing is about the, um, the Infinity, can we just see the Infinity again? That is actually just a Nissan mm. with a posh name. It's a bit like people who buy a perfectly normal house in the middle of a road, yeah. number 22, but then give it a name. No, you no, because a friend of mine did that. He lived in the Midlands somewhere, he was Lichfield, and he called, he was 22 at Casher Avenue, whatever it was, and he called it Sea View. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> like Honda has made an even better car, right? Here it is. Now, check that out. What? <laughs> How does that work? Well, basically, these things, the silver things, kind of move up and down and operate your legs, so for going upstairs or, or even walking on level ground. Now, guess who this is aimed at? Well, I'm guessing people with disabilities with legs. I mean, that would be a very... No. That's a clever Wrong. piece of technology. Wrong. It's aimed at the able-bodied. Well, why? It's the Rotherham robot. <laughs> you don't even have to walk to the chip shop anymore. Now, you just... <laughs> carry it on that. Well, what's the point in that? Well, hang on, no. How fast does it go? Don't know. Because I was at school in Rotherham and I could have done with that in cross-country. <laughs> <laughs> if you had one of those, mate, I'd love to have the remote control for it. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Blur. <laughs> Look at him go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, not in the scissor factory, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kick yourself in the nuts? Yes, yes. by <laughs> now. You, many times. Oh, bang, geez. bang, bang. We're definitely going to get you one of those. <laughs> with the remote you. control. Yeah. OK, Mercedes-Benz CL600, the big coupe. Yeah. 2004. Yeah. How much do you think it's worth now? Well, that's... Well, it depends on a million things. Like, is it baby diarrhoea brown? No, it's black. <laughs> Has a it done black... a million miles? No, it's done 30,000 miles. What so a four-year-old, they were 100 grand, those things, about four years ago, about 100 grand? Yeah. So 100,000 pounds, four years old, 30,000 miles in black, mm -hmm. with extras, yep. 50. 55. 16. 60. 16. 16,000? 16, he got 16,000 pounds for it. I'd have given him 16 and a half. I'd have gone to 17. <laughs> Are you what, watching? And a half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you sold it Ooh, cheap. I'll tell you exactly what's happened here, all right? Since 1993, the whole world's been, well, with flashcards anyway, has been playing musical chairs, okay? And the music's just stopped. So whatever car you've got now, or house, that's it for life. life. <laughs> now, it's a new mini convertible. It's got better engines, bigger boot. But the thing that caught my eye is it's fitted with something called an openometer. I'm not making this up. An openometer, which tells you how much you've driven it with the roof off. Well, what's the point in that? You may as well have a dial that tells you how many times you've driven it through Leicester. Why is it important to know how many miles you drove with the roof up and how many you drove with the roof down? It makes no sense. Well, it isn't, but um, do you remember Chevrolet on the early Corvettes? They had a little dial that showed you how many revs the engine had done. Revs? From new revs, yeah. Well, going around at 5,000 RPM, it'd be yes. like, it would have to be wider than the car just to get the dial in. It, well, it's bit, I worked it out for my old Porsche, actually. It you was, what? <laughs> My old Porsche was 25 years old. I worked out that it had done uh, 8.4 times 10 to the 8 revs. You, you since worked it was that out? Yes. <laughs> For your car? You yes. spent time... Wow, so you must actually have done everything there is to do in the whole world <laughs> to get to the bottom of the list of everything a human being can do. What's what? it like on the top of Everest? Is it good? It's all right. What are we going to talk about now? I'm going to talk about this. I went on the internet this week. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought you'd stop doing that. No, 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 no. Okay, here we go. Here's the clip that I found. 
Right, here is Manning Range Rover and pause it there. Now, James, what do you suppose happens next? Uh, well, it's icy, so he's going to crash into the post. Post? Uh, he'll, no, he'll skid into the wheelie bin there. Wheelie bin, OK. Play the rest of the tape. Let's see who's right. Oh! <laughs> Made him jump. He was standing what? there going, How the hell the did that The world's gone wobbly. I've driven through it. Because if you look, if we could look at this, there is no way of telling, is there? I'd do that now, having just seen him jump. <laughs> <I'm still driving. laughs> I'm going to park on this one. Yeah, because it's the same thing. Can I just make a point? It's a serious one, actually. Grandparents, if you've got grandkids who like cars, what they like is cars, okay? They don't like towels with car names written on them. No, apart from anything else, name stuff is often a bit of a waste of money. You can buy a bottle of red wine for 2 99 in the shops. If you get a bottle of red wine with the Alfa Romeo logo on it, it's 15 quid. We won't beat that, mate. See, this is, this is an ice scraper, OK? Uh, it's covered in Santa's pubes. <laughs> it's got Saab written on it. £38.50. What, for that? What? It's given us an idea, this. See this? This is a plate of sick. Oh. Now, it is, OK, utterly worthless, but if I just pop a BMW badge on it, <laughs> £13.80. Pence. It does work, this sort of branding. This wizard's sleeve, for instance. <laughs> Absolutely worthless, but it, it bears a Ferrari badge, £45. This pork sword... James, <laughs> don't go do the pork sword. <laughs> this cock... Has it got four rings on yes, it? it? <laughs> <laughs> This cock in your wizard sleeve and Thank that's... you. <laughs> okay. It's okay. all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> okay, that is the end of the news.